Hello world, this is Random Fix, and today I'm going to show you how to change your brake pads on your Toyota Camry. So make sure you check out the video in its entirety, as well as my 8 top brake tips video, which is located right at the icon above here. And let's go ahead and get this started. Today I'll be changing out these brake pads, but I'm going to show you how to do the rotor as well, in case that's something that you want to do. That only requires two additional bolts that need to come off to remove the actual bracket here so it's going to be very very easy and this is going to definitely save you time and money and i'm going to show you and for staying tuned till the end i'm going to give you guys my number one brake tip right, so before we get started you want to make sure you got yourself some kind of floor jack preferably with one of these rubber hockey puck style adapters so you don't damage the pinch rail some floor jacks here and you want to make sure to remove your hubcap whenever possible. And you also want to make sure you set the parking brake. And if you're going to be working on your rear wheels later, you want to make sure you go ahead and release that parking brake. Or else it's going to make things real difficult. Now we're going to go ahead and lift the vehicle up. As you can see, we've lifted the vehicle up. We're going to slowly lower it down to, on to the jack stands here and you want to make sure you do this nice and slow. There you go. And we're going to do the same thing to the other side. Alright, our front is completely off the ground here. Next, you want to go ahead and remove the lug nuts off the vehicle, which is a 19 millimeter. And you want to try to use the impact socket. Now you can see that these pads are almost down to the metal part and you can definitely see it from the little peep hole right here that there's barely any pad left. We're going to go ahead and just change out the pads. I'm going to show you guys if you do want to change out the rotors how easy this is. It'll just be one extra step so let's go ahead and get this started. Alright so you want to begin off with turning the wheel all the way to the driver's side if you're working on the driver's side wheel and what you're going to end up having to do is to remove these two 14 millimeter bolts here at the top and the other ones right down here and then you're just going to go ahead and unscrew these two And once these are all loosened up, I'm going to go ahead and put these to the side. And now you can go ahead and wiggle the caliper off its place. And your pads might just snap out like that. So grab your bungee cord, whatever hardware you have. To go ahead and support the brake caliper. You do not want this hanging on this line here, so take the weight off there. You could use a bungee cord instead of one of these metal hangers, but I found out that these metal hangers here actually do a better job of supporting the actual caliper, and there's very little chance that they actually break, especially if you're not going to be finishing the job overnight. I've seen these snap, cause some severe damage to the brake line. And with the weight taken off, what you're going to do now is you're going to go ahead and depending on if you're just going to do a pad slap like me, you can just go ahead and grab all the hardware off here and 
I'm going to be able to do this really quick without actually having to go through and remove the caliper bracket back here. But in case you do want to change your rotor, you're going to have to remove this caliper off. And the only way to get the caliper off is to remove this 17 millimeter bolt and this one right back here. So there's two of those. And once the 17 millimeter bolts are removed, you're going to be able to remove the bracket. And those are the 17 millimeter bolts that hold the bracket on and the bracket just comes off now and if you were to replace your rotor you can just take your old rotor off put your new rotor on and if possible you want to try to put some anti-seize right here just like I did before and what you want to do now is you want to go ahead and grab all the hardware off the bracket here and I'm going to show you guys how to put the new hardware back on and one thing you want to also do is you want to go ahead and inspect the the boots here on the guide bolts here you want to make sure these aren't stuck and they're going to be able to move freely so we're going to go ahead and lube these up one thing you want to pay close attention to is the bottom guide pin right here is the one that actually has that little rubber boot so you want to make sure you put that one back in its right place and the top one looks just like that so we're going to use some brake cleaner here and really clean the inside of these that way they're not sticking like these ones and we're going to be using some brake cleaner here and whatever brakes you do grab i'm using higher quality brake pads here you want to make sure it comes with new hardware so we're going to be using this hardware with the installation of these new brake pads and before you push the caliper back in you want to get yourself a clean rag and really spray down the piston here Get all that gunk off here with all that gunk off. We're going to grab a clean part of our rag and we're going to wipe around this piston. That way when we compress this piston back in, all this gunk and grime doesn't go back into the boot and possibly contaminate our brake fluid. With my bracket somewhat clean, I'm going to go ahead and mount it in place. And I'm going to do the, my final cleaning touches on the actual hub here with some clean gloves. All right, to put the bracket bolts back on, what you want to do is you want to either use some blue Loctite, use a torque wrench to about 70 pounds of torque if you're not really familiar with doing brakes here. Those are back on. I'm gonna go ahead and give this final wash down. Then you want to grab your clean, clean guide bolt here and use it a couple of times to really get the last bit of that gunk out and wipe it off with the towel. And you might have to do this a few more times. With the guide pin housings cleaned, you could use a couple of different things. They got this caliper lube right here, which you can use, but in colder weather applications. And I'm finding this 
slide glide which is a silicone based contact brake lube actually works really well and you just want to put a little tiny bit on and put it in and just turn 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 and you want to make sure that the boot sits on there and do that to the bottom part as well and the bottom one is the one with the rubber all right so both the pins are back in now we're going to go ahead and install the new hardware and the new hardware is easier to install when you go ahead and insert the long end first so in this case we're going to insert the long end and just push it from the short end and it's going to grab just like that and what you want to make sure is that gap right there gets narrower as it reaches towards the rotor side just like this one right here is going to go up top and we're going to put the long side in first and then push in the other side here there it goes And here's the top piece for the inner side. With all the hardware in place. I'm just gonna go ahead and put a little tiny bit of this brake lube right on each of the contact points. And if you want to make sure you're doing a good job on this, you want to go ahead and turn this a little tiny bit and grab your brake cleaner. Spray that off. And here we have our brand new brake pads here. And to put these in, we're just going to go ahead and Put in that side first, and we're just going to turn in just like that. If you're having a hard time with your rotor staying in place, you can always grab one of the nuts here, and then we'll go ahead and line up the rotor and make your job a little easier. Another way you can actually put the brake lube on is to actually just put it onto the pad itself right at the tip this makes it somewhat easier especially on the back side and just go ahead and swivel it there you go now we're going to go ahead and compress the piston back in but before you do that what you want to do is you want to come over to the actual brake fluid reservoir up here and you just want to go ahead and crack it don't leave it off that way you have less chance of water getting in here. Just go ahead and just crack it like that. And we're going to go and compress that brake piston back in now. We're going to be using one of these brake piston tools right here. It's going to make our job a lot better and faster. And if you guys only have any tools, check out my little cheats here, which you can compress these brake pistons without using anything but a screwdriver. I'll have the links below. All right, that's nice and flush. Now we can go ahead and get this back on. And a couple of things I like to do before I put the actual brake piston back on. I'm going to grab some of my lube here and just go around any place where friction may occur here and here. So that's all in place. Alright, before you're 
can put the caliper back on you got to put these little tensioners that basically spread the brake pads out so you don't just get unnecessary wear on your brake pads but what I like to do is go ahead and just put a little tiny bit of that brake loop at the tip so that way once it goes inside the actual caliper it's less likely to have friction and you want to make sure you hold these in place and while you're holding these in place you need to get these into these little tiny holes and make sure you got them seated right and this is going to be the tricky part you want to get your caliper loose and with your caliper loose you're going to go and put it in place just like that and keep hanging on to them until both claws and the piston are sliding down nice and smooth Keep tension on this. All right, that side it's pretty much done there you go the brakes are in place we got brand new brake pads installed and take your gloves off now and let's go ahead and give this the best chance by spring off the actual rotor here turning it a little bit that way in case we got anything contaminated and go ahead and get it off before it makes contact with the pad. Once you're done with one side, go ahead and pump the brake pedal at least six times. And this keeps the brake fluid reservoir from overflowing. After you're done with one side and you got the brake pedal depressed, go ahead and Tighten up the wheel. Now turn the wheel all the way to the opposite side. Second to last, don't forget to go ahead and fill up your brake fluid reservoir Went to the correct level. Once you're on level surface, lastly, once you're on the ground, you want to make sure you use a good torque wrench and torque the wheels to the right spec. All right, guys, we're all done with the brake job here. I hope the video helped you guys out. And make sure you guys go ahead and hit that subscribe button right here. So that way when I post any videos that are aimed to save you time and money, that you guys will get notified. And make sure that bell is checked off as well. And thanks for watching again. Please leave your comments and your questions below. You know if you guys have any comments hit the subscribe button and I really appreciate your continued support